he lost his dad and when he lost his father was he wife and then having to live in a box came to love and know and share so many wonderful memories with someone that um i think everybody who has met um leonard campbell his name well anyone who had the opportunity to meet him would appreciate you know, what a wonderful person he was when he passed away everyone that knew him was just like saying oh he never had a bad mind for anyone so that's the man that i want to talk about today um he was one of my biggest fans he supported me a lot he always encouraged me whenever um he's around my mom and you know he's there he always told my mom to put me on the phone so that he could talk to me and every time i spoke to him he was always full of kind words and encouragement and love and his story began in 2013 uh, lena came to the gambia to play as a dj but whilst he was doing the djing he would touch upon subjects and uh, he explained to me once that uh, when he was DJing, he made comments about um, the youths in the Gambia using the back way as a means to um, support their families and putting their lives at risk. As he was doing one of his shows, he went on to make comments about how the youths should not um, use the back way as a means to support their families. He encouraged the youths to work hard at home. He advised the government to find ways to um, provide employment for the youths in order to curb a dangerous journeys that these youths were taking um, in order to find greener pastures in the diaspora. Um, this is a very sad situation because even I have lost a, a cousin sister of mine um, through the back way. So I'm not surprised that someone like Leonard would go on to um, advise the youths against um, these dangerous journeys and also giving advice to the government to try and find employment for the youths within the country so that they don't have to be tempted to take these dangerous journeys. Now, Leonard um, went on to, um, I think there was sex attack going on in Gambia. For those of you that don't know, during the Jame regime or era, um, there used to be, or I think they still do it, but it's not as strict as it was back in the day. So basically the whole country, the businesses, everything is shut down and you have to clean the, the, the country. So streets are cleaned, rubbishes are taken out and all those sorts of things. So they call it sex attack. Um, set means in well of clean or cleaning. And so, yeah, one of one, one day he was talking to some people and he said, how comes everything is shut down here? And they explained to him that we have set settled. The government insists on everybody to clean. And so all businesses are shut down. And Leonard went on to comment that this was not a good idea. It was not um, something that the government should do, like shutting down all businesses. Um, you know, understandably, they, there's really no need to shut down all businesses in order to clean the country. Um, I believe personally that this should be done through the local councils and 
paying people to actually do the job so you can imagine how someone like him he came from the uk to the gambia and then finding out that this is what gambians have to go through he believed that they should have closed down all businesses in order to achieve the cleanliness of the country and coming from england you could understand because here we have a system which works really well the local councils you know religiously come and collect ways they have special people who clean the streets you know so and you can understand how frustrating this must be for a foreigner who came to the country but unfortunately whilst he was making those comments that this was not a good idea for the country and for the economic you know situation of the country what he didn't know was that he was being recorded and this recording was obviously taken to the authorities and at the time during the Jame era there was a lot of spies um for Jame. shame on you guys some of you i don't even want to say you know what i have in my heart for you because i want to keep this video very beautiful because for, for, for someone so beautiful as leon i want to keep it very um clean and very and, and full of light and love and my my aim here is not to come and make any insults my aim here is not to come and make any accusations my aim today is to just come and tell you the story of leon who did not have the opportunity to tell you his story unfortunately now leon was then when the recordings were taken to the authorities he was he was then um, taken to court and eventually he was prosecuted and put behind bars he spent six weeks in nia being interrogated and then he went to they, they sentenced him to prison and he was sentenced to my two and that's where he was and leon described his time at my two as very difficult and indignified and very hard of course he said that um, he described his bed where he slept he described where he had to lay his head down was next to the toilet and he said whenever someone was coming to use the toilet at night um the toilet door would bang on his head and he described it as very traumatic because he couldn't sleep at night and that the people were using the toilet all night long so he couldn't have a good night's sleep and i believe that the reason why this gentleman here was not killed by the jama regime was that he was such a beautiful soul like anybody who meets this man will tell you that when they meet him you know they could just feel you know how you know light he was and easy to be around and I believe that that had an impact on the people that were interrogating him. And so, as he spent, um, he spent almost three years in, in the Zambian prison there in Mile 2, and then he was released in 2015. And then on December 2015, I was in Gambia with my children um, for a family visit, and we were there for five weeks. And during these five weeks, I went to the market, the Brusubi market, the stone market in Brusubi, um, with my mother and my oldest daughter. And I think me being with my oldest daughter, who was of mixed race background, caught the attention of um, this man who, at the time that we met him, was calling himself Inshallah. And so he started speaking to my mother. He was at the market trying to get some food from the market ladies that were there because he said he would usually come and ask them to give him something so that he can go and cook something for himself. Um, that was the life that he was living. He explained to my mother that his documents were taken from him when he was taken to prison and that he has not had a hold of his documents and that he he basically um, he couldn't get a hold of his documents because the authorities had kept his documents and at the time he was going everywhere and any, anywhere trying to get his documents back with no possibility of that. And when i when we met this man I'm, I'm not used to calling him leon i just called him leon on this video because i wanted people to know his full name but when me and my mother met him he told us that his name was inshallah he decided to call himself inshallah when he converted to islam during his prison sentence and he was praying mashallah he used to fast he did everything he read the quran and my mother even described him on his last days that he would um take the quran he had this quran that was translated into english and every kid that he met he would try and make them read it with him and um when we met at the market on that fateful day in december 2015 while i was with my daughter and my mother um he was he started telling my mom all about his life right there and then you know <laughs> i think that was because my mom is the kind of person she's also easy to talk to um 
she's very kind-hearted and i think when you meet her as well you can see that straight away and i think that's the energy he felt from my mother in order for him not to be ashamed to tell her all about his life and the difficulties he was facing at the time so my mother and him exchanged numbers my mother described how to get to our house in Brusubi from the market and he promised that he will come and visit but we didn't really think anything of it i just thought that he was just a random person that we met and even though yes i felt that energy that positive energy he was very you know humble very um nice to talk to and so a, few, a couple of days later um he showed up at our house and we invited him for lunch and the rest is history from that day he was just part of our family and we came to love him and to know him as a person who was a very, you know, light individual. Like, let me describe to you the kind of person he was. Despite the difficulties that this man went through, he was trapped in Gambia without his documents. He lost everything that he had. He didn't have anything for himself. You know, he was living hand to mouth. You know, like, you know, the day we met him, this guy was in the market, begging the market um, ladies to give him the leftovers you know that they have that they don't want to use so that he can go and cook it so you can imagine someone coming from england and then finding themselves in that kind of situation it must have been a very desperate situation in order for him to do that and so you know with all that difficulties when he was around us it was like this guy has not been through anything you know like he was just full of life full of light full of love full of joy and happiness and all of those things you know um he was just a wonderful person to be around and he just made us all feel so good and he was so positive and uh, my sisters would often you know tell him off because you know sometimes like when he goes to the house one day and my sister makes him a cup of tea he will turn around and say suga you are the best tea maker and then when yaoli does it for him the next day he'll be like yaoli you are the best tea maker and then when my brother does it for him he'll be like esa you are the best tea maker so <laughs> And then the girls would then turn around to him when he asked them again to make him tea and say, no, we're not making you tea because you are, you always, you know, mix things up and say that this person is better and then you, always, you say everyone is good. You know, so that was the kind of person he was. So he was a very positive person, very, very lively and, you know, friendly and, and just easygoing, you know, and did not take life too seriously like most of us do. And yeah, so that's the man that we know and came to love my mother and uh my my mother's husband my stepfather they tried to help um uh, leon as much as they could his sister was also helping him he came into some money um leon unfortunately lost his dad when he was in gambia in 2016 he lost his dad and when he lost his father whilst he was in trapped in gambia he couldn't go to the funeral and all of that and he was just crying to my mom and then he, i believe he got some inheritance money from his father's death and he then used this money to open a little shop for himself and he also bought a land a partner he was with at the time i'm not going to mention names because like i said i want to keep this very clean and very beautiful because he was a beautiful soul and he would not have wanted me to diss anyone you know so i'm just going to keep it that way but he met this woman um in gambia a gambian woman who you know they were going out at the time and she took advantage of his situation and convinced him to buy a land with the money that he bought he bought the land with her i believe it cost him two hundred thousand dollars and then he opened the shop was this woman was very abusive towards him she was basically um uh very controlling and uh, very harsh towards him it was like they were two different people and you know people that have been around them said that she was the kind of person you didn't really want to be around because she will take an offense to every single thing and um when they bought the land and after they broke up he asked for um, the doc for the documents to be changed to only his name she refused and she even threatened him and said if you if you keep going on about this line i'm gonna pay someone and you'll be back straight into mile two and given the fact that he already had a horrible experience in mile two he didn't want to go through that again and he just let go of the land that he bought with this lady and so he had so many difficulties and it was just his life was just you know it went on a downward spiral if you if you like because the things that he went through were just just too much and too traumatic for anyone to just conceive and you know to have someone that you thought that you know this person was supposed to care for you and be kind to you to treat you that way it's very hard to swallow and it's very it was very hard for us to swallow as well as we became like his adoptive family in the gambia leon was due to go to the trrc to give um, his side of the story in late december but unfortunately he passed away um, a few weeks before he was due to give his testimony and to give his side of the story 
And so that's why I made this video because I want people to know him as a person, as a human being, because he was a genuinely, genuinely wonderful person to be around. And even when I started this YouTube channel, um, he said, when we spoke on the phone, when I recently graduated, we, he was at my mother's house just after my graduation ceremony, and he wanted to talk to me. And when he came over to the phone, he was like, congratulations, and he was praying for me. And he promised me that after he finishes with the TRRC, he was going to come back to the UK, and then um, he will come and visit me. He promised to come and visit me. And, you know, he was very excited to go and tell his side of the story. But unfortunately, he didn't have the chance to do that because he passed away. Now, um... I believe, I believe that Inshallah named himself Inshallah because he wanted to have hope and he, that gave him strength, maybe something that we would not understand, but I believe that this name was not given to him just by, you know, randomness. I believe he gave himself the name Inshallah once he found out what Inshallah means in Islam, which means by the grace of God. And he, he needed that, he needed that, that um, name for himself because it gave him something to hope for, um, something to keep him going. Um, and like I said yesterday, someone said, you wrote a beautiful story about him. And I said, well, yeah, because <laughs> his name was Inshallah. He didn't get the chance to tell his story, but he has someone like me. Like I said, when, when I, the last time I spoke to him, I had just started my YouTube channel um, and he told me that he was going to subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> And then my mom recently told me that he was just bluffing you. He wanted to encourage you because he doesn't even have a smartphone. So how could he have subscribed to your channel? So, you know, but he, he's that kind of person that just gives you life and hope. And one thing I can learn from this whole situation is that, you know, whenever I, I promised myself when he died, I said, if I have another bad day, if I ever feel ungrateful, if I ever feel down, I am going to think about inshallah and i am going to take strength from his story because no matter how hard things have been for him whilst he was trapped in gambia whilst he was imprisoned you know mistreated and all of those things he was still smiling he was still hopeful when you meet him you wouldn't even think the things that he has been through he has been through them because he was just full of light and joy and we should all learn from that because it just goes to show you that no matter how hard your life is there's someone else's life much harder than yours there's always someone who is going through it much rougher than you are and so when i think about his story it gives me strength because i say to myself if inshallah I can smile after everything that had happened to him you know then so can i you know and so his that's what he brought to my life that's the change that he brought to my life to make me very humble and very grateful and very hopeful you know because he had hope to the point where he named his name literally after something like hope because by the grace of god means hope and so for him to name himself inshallah um and to also be the kind of person that you would want to be around he was very you know chatty very lively you know very fun to be around if you around him you would laugh so much in fact my mother said a week exactly a week before he passed away um he went to visit my mother on a sunday and he passed away the following monday you know not the next monday but the following one so basically he came and a week before he passed away he came to my mother's house and he said he stayed at my brother's house that was less like attached to my mom's house so he stayed there and my mom said um, he was very down and not like himself, like he's, you know, all lively stuff. And she would ask, well, are you all right? And he said, yeah, I'm fine. But my mom said that she could see that his stomach was a bit swollen. And so she told him, you know, do you want a tire? And he went, a tire like green tea that they brew in Gambia. And he said that he didn't want it. He, he, he didn't want it. My mom said, oh, this is not normal because he's not the kind of person that will turn down a tire. So my mom said she went and made it anyway. And then, um when it was he slept over um that day in my family home he actually slept over and i said to my mom that was his way of saying goodbye to you because he came on the sunday and then stayed until monday and then the next monday he passed away so when he stayed there on the monday my mom said they cooked something they cooked um uh, red banachin my mom said they cooked and my mom said they went to call him um from from the boys quarters they went to call him to come and have lunch and he said that he wanted to eat by himself you know because i think he was feeling unwell he didn't want to come out and join everyone so my mom said they came and told my mom that he said he wanted to eat by himself so my mom said no we're not going to let him eat by himself so my mom said they took the food into my brother's um uh 
wife's quarters and so that he could eat with everyone because my mom said i did that because i said when i eat with him he gives me appetite i said mom how does he give you appetite when you eat with him and she said because he will say oh this food is nice this food is wicked <laughs> you know so so yeah so that was the kind of person he was he just brings so much positive effect on you that you just want to be around him and that's what my my mom enjoys and then you know the fact that he calls everyone babes and you know at first everyone thought that he wanted them as a girlfriend not understanding that calling someone babes excuse me it's like normal a normal thing to do here in england and yeah he was it was just like day two days ago well his body was sent back yesterday um to jamaica and um the, the night before his body was sent i spent most of the night speaking to my mom i believe we spoke until about almost two o'clock in the morning because we were just reminiscing on all the memories that he has left behind you know just thinking about all the good old times and you know how he has affected our lives and my mother obviously is very distraught and very devastated by this um i think even when it happened she didn't want to believe that it happened like she was just in disbelief um she she she's a beautiful soul because she met this man and she did everything that she could to help him and also my stepfather um i'm not forgetting my stepfather he stepped up a lot for for leon and um, we're very very grateful for that and yeah and my stepfather is also jamaican and he lives in england here so he was very understanding of leon's situation and had a lot of sympathy and empathy towards him and did everything he could he even told leon to come and stay um at our house but leon i believe wanted his own freedom and so he didn't take up the offer but he would often come and stay in the boys cottage in my mother's home and we welcomed him as a family we you know made sure that whenever he was around he had something to eat and you know when he disappears we get worried like <laughs> i mean last year last year um around august i was ready to go and file a missing persons report on facebook because <laughs> because inshallah went to casamans and didn't tell my mom or my my family that he went to casamans so we didn't see him for weeks and my mom called me my mom was worried my mom was like oh my god inshallah i haven't heard from him for this long oh what's going on i haven't seen him what could happen to him so my mom was so worried so i said mom uh let's let's i'm going to do a facebook um i'm going to do a facebook appeal and then i spoke to my sister yaoli and then when i spoke to my by the time i spoke to my sister yaoli, my sister yaoli said i see go and relax <laughs> you know go and relax because leon is enjoying himself in casamas and i was like oh. i was relieved you know when i when when i found out that i i didn't have to end up going to facebook to go and look for him so he was you know really important to me and my family and so like this hit us as if you know he was my uncle like he was literally my uncle he regarded my mother as his sister and so you know it's very very hard and my mom is obviously heartbroken you know by this i i don't think my mom really believed that he died until he actually his body was sent off i think that's when my mom really believed that yeah he's gone now because she couldn't believe it before you know because it was just so real and it was just unreal to her you know because she came to know and love this man as a brother and so we as a family we all had broken and we Everybody was praying that the body would hurt in the air in Gambia. So that God has answered our prayer. So we thank you for everything. Understand that Leon's family are also heartbroken and devastated by this news. You know, we thank his sister. Um, who came through for him and you know made sure that you know his body his documents were sorted out it took over three months to get his documents sorted out because guys jamaica and gambia are not the same in jamaica if you lose your passport it's very difficult to get it back because you have to present your uh, birth certificates and if you do not have your original birth certificates it's, very, it's a very difficult process so it's not like Gambia where you pay this money to anybody and you get your birth certificate or your passport it doesn't work like that in Jamaica so it was very hard for him to get his papers and that is why when he his um, papers from the UK were taken he never had a British 
passport, which was um, one of his difficulties. And so because he didn't have his Jamaican passport, the process of that is a very long and difficult process and very expensive as well. And so that's why he was trapped in Gambia for so long. And even after his death, you can see how long it took for him to get his, for, for, for the family to get his documents together in order to take his body back home. And so we are very grateful to the family for making sure that everything was provided for him here. You know, they, they um, made sure that everything was taken care of. His sister in America was in touch with my mother the whole way through and also with Inshallah's um, partner, Mar Mariam. And so there was like um, a lot of communications over the last few months to bring his body back home yesterday. So yesterday, his body was transported from the Banjul Dead House to the Union Airport where his body was transported into the plane. And I think um, the flight left Gambia at around 6 p.m. And then knowing how far it was, they had to stop in Brussels before going off to Jamaica and where his family um, would be collecting his body um, probably today, given the fact that the flight left really late from Gambia yesterday. So we're so grateful to his sister Jennifer, who made sure that everything was provided for, his, for her brother and made sure that he was sent back to his homeland. And we are sad because we would have just appreciated it if he was buried in Gambia. We would have made sure he also had a decent burial in Gambia. But his family wanted him back to Jamaica and we respect and understand that. And uh, it, 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 it might give them a closure because remember Leon has been trapped in Gambia for so long and he didn't have this opportunity they didn't have the opportunity to see him and so them wanting to have his body back to Jamaica where he was born and bred is very understandable at the same time as much as we love him just as much as a family member as well so um the whole thing is is very sad but I just wanted people to know that this was a human being whose rights were violated the comments he made about the government were so trivial and yet they kept him locked up they took his documents from him they took all of his possessions if you look at my video about st song kodo be kodo my dad's video i dedicated it to him because it was um I, I felt if you look at the writings there it says they took everything from you and yet you know you still stayed positive and so that that's the man that that's the man that we know he was beautiful he was a beautiful 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 soul and he was kind and he was full of light you know when i think about inshallah um there is um the words that come to my mind is love light joy positivity these are the things that come to my mind when i think about him he was very positive and he knew a lot of people in gambia and he was very much loved by a lot of people anyone who has the opportunity or the luck to meet him you know you know straight away he was that kind of person when you meet him you just know that yeah this person has a clean heart and that's very hard to find in individuals but he was just one of those souls that when you meet him you just think right you know he is just you know beautiful and it, it just it just shines through you know from his personality you know so this news has left us really devastated. I couldn't have done this video yesterday when his body was being transported. I mean, it's so sad that he had to come to Gambia as this lively, this man full of life and then having to live in a box. Okay. So, mom, the phone you phone now. I two weeks left. I'm like, no, no, I'm problem. Why did you coffee? Yeah, I'm taking your coffee three years. Mm -hmm. It's just so heartbreaking, you know. It's just so heartbreaking. And and my mother said um, to me that, oh, I see. This is not how I wanted to send him off. You know, she she was just gobsmacked by the whole thing. She was like, I don't want you. And I I think he knew he was going to die. Because yeah, his partner said when she's Ghanaian and she came to Gambia and she said when she was leaving to go to Ghana, she promised to come back again soon. And he told her, hurry up and come back before I die. And then she went and just a few days later, she was called and told that he passed away. So I think he knew. And the fact that, you know, it was very random for him to go and uh, use the boys' quarters in my mother's home exactly one week before he passed away and spending time with the family and, you know, having that last lunch together. My mother said <laughs> when they took the lunch, to the boys got it so they can have lunch with him he ate and then he took the geja geja is salt fish you know jamaicans and their salt fish he took the salt fish and my mother said he ate it like dalasi i am no more dalasi <laughs> i ate i get that susu but dalasi <laughs> so yeah so leon inshallah you know thank you thank you for for coming into our lives and giving us so much happiness and so many memories 
thank you for giving us so many memories um wonderful memories that we can look back on and we would always smile when we think about you we would smile when we think about you we loved you and we we miss you so much and you shouldn't have suffered the way that you did you didn't deserve it but i'm hoping i hope your death would be the light at the end of your dark tunnel because you deserve it i hope that you are in heaven smiling down on us send us send us send us a lot of love um pray for us sprinkle some love on this earth i know that god took you because he needed you more than we needed you because you're a beautiful soul and he needed one angel down there and so sprinkle some love on us because we desperately need it in this world we need a lot of kindness we need a lot of love and we need to understand that life is too short because we go on mistreating each other as if we don't matter people like inshallah they go and when they go they remind us how important it is to be kind because you can have everything in the world you can be the richest man in the world and when you die People are not going to say, oh, he was the richest man in the world. That's not the beauty. The beauty is people like Inshallah who never had anything. But yet they leave an impact so much so that when they pass away, the first thing people say is how kind and how beautiful their souls were. And that is what is important. So let's love each other. No matter where we're from, it doesn't matter where we're from. I am sure that if it was a Gambian that made that comment, he would not have ended up in prison and like this. Who knows? But maybe because he was a foreigner, he was taken out of contest and someone decided to someone decided to destroy him by recording that what he said about how it doesn't make sense to have set set up or how he doesn't believe that the boy should go on the back way and that the government needs to create jobs for the youths. Those are things that nobody should have to go to prison for. Nobody should have to go to prison for saying something so trivial like that. Let's learn to love each other, hey? Let's be positive. Let's be kind to each other. And most importantly, let's learn lessons from those that have left us. Let's learn from the impact that they leave on this earth. But the things that they stand for when it comes to love kindness thank you for watching i imagined leona i imagined that when that plane got to the sky you spread your wings and you've flown away and um last night before i went to bed i was meditating and whilst i was meditating i could hear birds chirping away and I believe that's, that I believe that those birds were you showing me or telling me that you are in a much better place and that you are finally free, free from the shackles of the cruelty of this earth, free from the shackles of the hate on this earth. I had a friend, and he told me. He told me. Um, He told me what he loved about me the most was that I was myself. And so I want to say, Leonard Campbell, inshallah, thank you for being yourself because yourself was what brought us joy and happiness and kindness and light into our lives. Thank you for coming into me and my family's life. Thank you for leaving such an impact on me because when I think back about your memories, when I have that bad day, when I go through difficult times, I will always remember your story and I will remember how beautiful you are. I will remember how you overcame all the obstacles that were put in your way. And despite the difficulties that you went through, despite the suffering, you still stayed positive. And so if you can stay positive in those, in those kinds of situations, then I can definitely, you know, 
get through a bad day or get through when I'm down or when I'm feeling a little ungrateful. That's the impact that you have left on me. And so I thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, my family and I are honored to know you and to love you. May your soul rest in the most perfect peace. Let's love each other. And let's be kind to each other. Give us some help from above the earth. We definitely need it. Let's love each other.